Welcome. Let's talk about how monopolies maximize profit. So we're here to graph a monopoly's cost, revenue, and profit and figure out exactly how they predictably choose the price and quantity that maximizes their profit. So if you're a monopoly firm, you have more levers than a competitive firm would have when maximizing profit. For these guys, they choose a quantity first, and that rule, to remind you, is you choose the quantity where the marginal revenue just equals the marginal cost. A quantity lower or higher than that will give you less than maximum profit. And then you choose a price. Unlike a competitive firm who is a price taker, you get to choose your price. So what kind of price should you choose? The highest price you can get away with that will still maintain this quantity. How would you know that? As long as we know the approximate location of the demand curve, we know the maximum amount that people will pay for a given quantity. Boom. So let's go through this by looking at the graph. We've got our marginal revenue curve, we've got our demand curve, we've got our marginal cost curve. Here the marginal cost curve is simplified to be a straight horizontal line just so it's super super easy. Do we expect all marginal cost curves to look like this? Probably not. They probably exhibit an upward sloping shape, but don't worry about that for now. So we're looking for the quantity that supplies us with the equality between marginal revenue and marginal uh, cost. Marginal cost is here, marginal revenue comes down. The point where they cross, point A, is our optimal quantity. That's our profit maximizing quantity. So eight should be um, how many we produce. And then it costs us on average $200 to do one more, but we know that demanders will pay 600 to buy eight. So that $600 price, or in other words, once we've chosen the quantity, go up to the demand curve and figure out the price, that's how our monopoly works. So quantity of eight, price of 600, is the profit maximizing quantity and price. And then to further oversimplify it, we've made the marginal cost equal to the average total cost. So if you're looking for what is the total profit, you look for total revenue, quantity, times price, so 8 times 600, minus cost, your total cost, which can be found as average total cost times quantity, in other words, 200 times 8. So the difference, 400 times 8, or 3200, that is your total profit. Let's look at some slightly less stylized and oversimplified cost curves. So here we have a marginal cost curve that's upward sloping. Um, and we've added also the average total cost curve, which is now its own thing. So let's go through the same process. Let's choose the quantity and then choose the price that gives us the highest profit. So the quantity is always found where marginal revenue crosses marginal cost. Here, point A, you find your quantity. And then remember, you want to charge as much as you can and still sell that quantity. So you march up to the demand curve and then you choose your price by that intersection of that quantity and the demand curve. And then to figure out total profit, you figure out total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is price times quantity. And then total cost is average total cost times quantity. You're earning PM for each unit that you sell, and it's costing you on average ATCM for each unit that you sell. So the difference is profit, PM minus ATC times your quantity. That's your profit. Let's try it out. So here's a question for you. I'll read it aloud, and then you can pause it and work the question. Then we'll go through the answer. So you're given a series of graphs, downward sloping demand, marginal revenue that's below it, upward sloping marginal costs and average cost curves. What are the monopolists profit maximizing price and output level here? Is it A, P equals $3, Q equals 40? Is it B, P equals $16.50, Q equals 40? Is it C, P equals $6 and Q equals 40? Or is it D, P equals $6 and Q equals 80? Go ahead and pause it, and we'll reveal the answer. 
The correct answer is find the quantity where MR crosses MC, that's at 40, and then find the price that's at the demand curve at that quantity, so 1650. Answer is B. Okay, one more thing about this. What is the profit? The monopolist, same set of graphs, earns a profit of, is it A, $600? B, 420, C, 240, or D, 480. Go ahead and pause it, then we'll work the answer. So remember that profit is total revenue minus total cost. And total revenue is price times quantity. Total cost is average total cost times quantity, since average total cost is defined as total cost over quantity. You can rearrange the equation and get this. So total revenue is 1650 times 40, or this total blue box here. What's total cost? Well, your total cost is at that quantity. Go up to the average total cost curve, it's $6. So I'm paying $6 on each of 40. And the difference is the difference between the total revenue and the total cost is your profit. And that's your yellow box, $420. Now, in case anyone ever stops you in a dark alley and asks, yo, is there a monopoly supply curve? You'll have a ready answer. No, there's not one. Monopolists don't have supply curves since there is no predictable way that we can know exactly how much quantity they'll, su they'll supply at each price because they have control over price. One more gut check question. If the market for some good were converted from a competitive industry to a monopoly, which of the following would occur as a result? Is it A, prices would fall on the output produced by the monopolist? Is it B, some consumer surplus would be reallocated to the monopolist as profit? Is it C, the overall level of profit earned in the industry would decline or decrease? Or is it D, more output would be produced by the monopolist? Go ahead and pause, think about it, and we'll work through the answer. So let's go through each of these in turn. If we are looking at A, prices would fall on the outputs produced by the monopolist, that's probably not true. We expect that, that profit maximizing monopolists will always choose marginal revenue crossing marginal cost. This is usually at a lower quantity and a higher price than the competitive firm. So we also know that D is wrong because monopolist is going to produce less than the competitive firm. How about B and C? So some consumer surplus would be reallocated to the monopolist as profit. If the price goes up, we know consumer surplus, other things equal, goes down. Consumers will have less surplus at the end of the day between what they would have paid and what they actually have to pay as the price goes up. And so probably this one is legit. And then C, the overall level of profit earned in the industry would decline or decrease as we go to monopoly. That's just not true. There's more, monopoly, there's more profit in monopoly than there is in um, competitive firms. So some consumer surplus would be reallocated to the monopolist as profit, which is good for the monopolist, bad for the consumer. So how are we to think about monopoly? Is it a good or a bad force in our world? 